What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, we are going to be talking about one of the best ways to maximize the value of the comics in your collection, and how I've done this to help grow both my collection and my business. Stay tuned. <music> So before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. Also going to have a giveaway that's part of this video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Now, I do get a lot of questions about this. I've seen a lot of questions also pop up on the comic book collecting subreddit. So I thought this would be a interesting video to talk about, cover a few different topics. We talked about how to maximize the value of your comics and your collection. The presser, uh, so the presser and cleaner that I use on my books and why. Why I think it's important to get your books pressed and cleaned before grading, the differences in values it can make, and how I decide what I send in to get pressed and cleaned and ultimately graded. Now, I know that for some people, when you start talking about values and investing in comics and grading and, and all that kind of thing, some people can get a little bit bent out of shape about it when you talk about it, but the reality is that comics are a very big business, millions and millions of dollars in comics trade hands every single day. You've got huge auction houses like Heritage that have auctions that do probably a half million each week. And then you've got Comic Link and Comic Connect and Hakes and all these others that are out there, plus eBay. I mean, eBay is the biggest dealer in comics out there. So this is a very big business. And if you have a collection, if you've got comics, you could have a lot of value there. And it's a disservice to yourself if you aren't trying to maximize what you have. It's not necessarily that you want to go out and sell it. I mean, that might not be it. Maybe that you've been going after some big key or some grail and you want to be able to use the books you have to get that book. Or you want to be able to pass something on to your kids or your family or whatever it might be. So there are other reasons out there on why you might want to get your books pressed, clean, and graded, and just overall maximize that value. Because first and foremost, pressing and cleaning and grading, it definitely is to get the most out of the books. It is to help support selling of your comics. There are other reasons as well, but selling is a big part of it. And the higher the grade, the better that book presents, the more value that that book has. And pressing and cleaning helps ensure that you get that highest possible grade in the best presenting book. Now, it's not necessarily that you're looking to sell that book you know, absolutely in that moment. It could be that you want to get the most trade value for it. Like I said, you could be wanting to go after some grail or some other book that some dealer has, and you want to use the books that you have to get that book. And having your books pressed and cleaned and graded and having the maximum value out of them can help you get the most for your books. It also makes it a lot easier if you, you know, if something happens and you're leaving your books to your family or, you know, your kids or whatever it is, it's just easier for people to handle books that are graded so they can, it can help them define values so that somebody ultimately does not take advantage of them uh, after the fact when they're trying to sell. Now, another big part of it is the presentation of the books. Now, I've talked about this before. I know that there are other solutions out there where you can get uh, books put into these like kind of like plastic cases that you can buy. But personally, I just don't like the way they look as much. <laughs> I like the way graded books look. That's why I got them up behind me on the shelves. That's a big part of it to me too. I do really like the presentation of it. Uh, and so that is another part of grading and of pressing because you know it makes the book look as nice as possible. But value definitely is the, the main reason for getting your books pressed and cleaned and graded. Now, what made me want to make this video was that I had my recent CGC submission that came back and I had some really great interactions with my presser as part of that. I also had a lot of different types of books, a variety of books that I've gotten back. Now, if you're not aware, I've talked about him in all of my CGC submission videos and my CGC return videos, uh, but my presser is the comic book presser and he is sponsoring this video. If you've watched my CGC unboxings on this channel, almost all of those books were pressed and cleaned by the comic book presser before getting graded by CGC. 
He does incredible work on all kinds of books. I've had him press Golden Age books from 1940 all the way up to Moderns from 2020, Silver Age magazines, and everything in between. He has very reasonable prices and is also a CGC certified dealer and will pass his savings on to you if you have him submit your books through him. If you're looking to get some books pressed and clean, make sure to check him out on Instagram and through his website. His contact information is in the details of this video. All right, we are back. Now, as part of this, he is also giving away a $50 coupon for pressing services. So if you want a chance to win that coupon, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment with hashtag press. Let me know, do you send your books in to get pressed and cleaned? Have you been sending in your books integrated? Have you been thinking about it? So like I said, I do get this question fairly regularly where people are asking if they should send books in, how they should decide what to send in, who I use as a presser, that kind of thing. But this is who I use as my presser and I am extremely happy with the results. And so I'm gonna talk about that a little bit about why did I pick the comic book presser as my presser, because I've had people ask that as well. So for me, it really largely started during the comic boom. I had been putting books aside for maybe a year, year and a half as I'd been buying them, ones that I thought would likely uh, be something that I wanted to get graded. And so I'd been looking for a presser, and I'd seen some of his posts on Instagram. So I followed up with him, asked for some references, I talked to some of those references, and all the feedback seemed real great, but there were a few important things that I was looking for, and he checked all those boxes. One of them was that he works on books from all ages, all the way from golden age up to modern. I saw the posts on his site, the posts on his Instagram, of the different books that he had been working on, going all the way back to like early Batmans up to, to modern age books, you know, Ultimate Fallout 4 and stuff up through, you know, now, like 2020. And I also wanted to make sure that he worked on rare and expensive books. Like I said, I, I wanted to see those older Golden Age books. I wanted to see books that were of high value because I was planning on sending some books in that were of high value as well. So it's good just to know that you see other people trusting uh, that, that presser with those books. And so I felt I could trust that presser with my books. I also... Pricing is important. You know, he had competitive pricing, and so that was one of the things that, that I was looking at. He's also an authorized CGC dealer. Now, for me, I ultimately didn't use his CGC submission, his dealer submission, but that is a big advantage. If you don't have your own CGC account, like for me, I get 10% off with my account, so I just like to use that one because then I can also track the books as they're being graded and I know when they're coming back. But if you have your books sent in through him, he passes his 15% dealer discount on to you. So it actually helps with your cost of your pressing. That's one good way to look at it, that if you were going to send these books in to get graded anyway, if you're sending them to him first to get pressed and then you get 15% off your grading, that's going to effectively reduce the total cost of your, your pressing service. So just something that I like to consider. I also wanted to make sure that he did multiple presses because there are some pressers out there, some services out there that will only press a book one time. And one time is rarely enough, unless you're dealing with just moderns that need to get some little like rippling out or something like that. One press is generally not enough, especially when you're dealing with bronze, silver, and golden age. So I want to make sure he, he presses them until they are, are done. And so, you know, and I'll talk about that a little bit later with some of the books that he worked on. The last one was that I wanted a fast track option because this was during the comic boom and there were huge backlogs for getting books pressed and, and cleaned and all of that. And he had a fast track option that I could select where it was, I think, like an extra $15 per book. And so that was a big benefit at that time. Uh, I think right now his turnaround times are about three weeks fast track, six weeks non-fast track. So if that three weeks matters to you, you, know, you can put in an extra $15 per book and you can have the book processed more quickly. Uh, for me right now, I'm using the, the standard process. But during the comic boom, it was, it was months and months. So there was a huge benefit for me at least uh, to, to just pay that extra $15 and get the books back more quickly. Now, I just jumped in and sent him like 75 books right off the bat, probably about forty to $50,000 in comics. So I really kind of like uh, put a lot of faith in what I had heard and sent these all in, and I was extremely happy with the results. Now, at this time, I was also sending books to two other pressers just to kind of try out different pressers. I wasn't quite sure uh, who I was going to use at that point, and 
his results were the best. And so ultimately that's who I have continued to send books to since then. I've probably sent a little over 200 books now, I think, something like that, over the last about one and a half to two years. And these books have ranged all the way from modern books, you know, around like 2020, going back to, I think I sent in the 1939. Yeah, I, I sent in an Action 19 uh, that I had him press and, and clean. And I think that's like December of 1939. So, so he handles all kinds of books across all ranges of ages. And so that was, that was obviously a big important thing for me because uh, at that point I wasn't into Golden Age nearly as much as I am now and I've gotten more into it and so he's pressed a lot of Golden Age books for me. All right so now you've heard why I picked the comic book presser but I think the you know the fun thing is now checking out some of these books that I've sent in the types of grades I got the, the value that it adds what types of things I look for when I'm sending books in to get pressed and cleaned and graded. Now one of the the first ones let's say the first thing I, I look at is high value books. So I'm just gonna say these are books that are about $1,000 and above. And a big part of this is that high value books are often much easier to, to sell if they are graded. People are just gonna have more confidence in what they're buying, that they're not getting something that's restored or overgraded or whatever else it might be. And with books like this, a half grade could be hundreds or thousands of dollars. So you really want that book to present as good as possible when you are sending it into CGC to get graded. So my first example here is, uh, is this one right here, which is Crime Suspense Stories number 22. Uh, this is this uh, classic Johnny Craig cover, super violent cover, one of the iconic covers from the golden age from pre-code horror. And this one, 6.5 recently sold for 15,600. There's actually another 6.5 that sold for over 20,000, but I think that was a little a little high. But in this type of grade range, this is a book that's about $2,000 or so per point, maybe even a little bit more than that. So you really want to maximize your chance at getting the best grade possible. A half grade could be $1,000, a full grade $2,000. So these are the types of books you definitely want to have pressed and cleaned before you send them into CGC. If anything, it also will make the book present better, which presentation is, is another big part of the value of a book. If you have a book that is a, a 5.0 and looks, you know, like all nice and crisp like this, or a book that's a 5.0 and has a bunch of, you know, rippling or something like that to the cover that detracts from it a little bit, you know, this one with the nice presenting, you know, cover is probably going to sell for a little bit more. So you just want to maximize your, your chance of getting the highest grade possible and the highest dollar amount possible for the book if you're ultimately going to sell it. Me, this one is one of my keeper books right now, so not for sale. Now, another high value book that I had sent in relatively recently to the comic book presser is this one right here. This is Secret Diary of Eerie Adventure. It came back a 4-0. This is a pretty rare book. And so this is an example too of where I'm very comfortable sending him rare books, expensive books. I mean, that Crime Suspense Story is 22, easily 10,000 plus dollar book. This one probably in the $7,000 range. And the unique thing with this one is that this is a very thick book. It is a square bound book. And so you can see it's a hundred page book and really, really thick. And so, Whenever you have these unique types of cases, it's a different way that you have to press the book. These will have glue in the spine here. And if you use too much heat, you don't press it correctly, you can completely ruin the book. You can spread the glue out on the inside of the book and it's just ruined. And you're gonna get either a much lower grade, maybe a, a restored grade if they can't tell if somebody added glue or not. I mean, all kinds of bad things can happen if you don't have a presser that is experienced. And so this is the type of thing that I was looking for. A presser that was comfortable handling a book like this, a rare book, a square bound book, old golden age book, and a very valuable one. Uh, so that's the type of thing where you want someone with that experience because in a book like this, getting every ripple out might not be worth it. You know, that might risk splitting the spine more. Uh, you might risk damaging the book. And so you have to have someone that knows how far to push a book uh, so that you can get the best grade possible without adding additional damage. Now this this next one from this, you know, the high value type of books I'm talking about here is Torchy number four. I just recently got this one back. You see you got a 6.5, which is a very nice grade for this book. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this book was that this had a unique kind of production defect and that it just has one staple. This book is supposed to have two. It's supposed to have another one up here, 
but this book specifically only had one. And this is the type of thing where you want someone that has experience because there's a much higher risk that someone could detach a cover when you just have one staple and you're doing, you know, the pressing and cleaning and all of that on the book. And you can see like, he still, he did a, a fantastic job cleaning this off, you know, got rid of all the dirt, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, still pressed amazing, got a higher grade than I was expecting, a 6.5. And in this book, I mean, a 6.0 recently sold for $1,500. It's about $250 per point. And if you're spending, you know, $20, $30, whatever it might be uh, to get the book pressed, that is a great return on your money. That's the type of thing you're looking for, that you want to get more out of the book by spending that money to get it pressed and cleaned. And this is the type of example where you get that. Now, <laughs> the next one, this one is also a high value book, but I've got a separate category of books that, uh, that I've talked about here. And these are ones with spine rolls. Spine rolls can be tricky. You can do a lot of damage to a book if you don't fix a spine roll cor correctly. You can detach covers, detach staples, split spines, all that kind of stuff. Now, this is, I think, uh, to date, the most expensive book that I have ever sent him. And this is my Phantom Lady number 17. And so this one had a huge spine roll. It was probably bad enough that it might not have even gotten into a standard slab. And so that's something you really want to think about with spine rolls, especially if you're dealing with Golden Age books, because Golden Age books are a little bit wider. They, they tend to almost fill up the entire slab. There are some that actually do fill up the entire slab. And if you have even a little bit of a spine roll, they're going to move it into a magazine size case. And it's weird, but magazine size slabs often sell for less and it's just because they don't present as well they they are harder to store this is a little bit more of a hassle to deal with and so this one i mean a 3.0 sold this year for 16,800 a 1.0 sold for 8,480 so this is a book that is probably on the order of five to six thousand dollars per point that is absolutely the type of book that you want to make sure you get the highest grade possible with it. Now this one, it does have pen on the cover. You can see that, but he fixed this spine roll and it just looks so much sharper now because you've got this really clean edge over here. It's got great colors and everything, and it's just a much better presenting book also in the standard slab. But this one, before I got it pressed and cleaned, no question. I'm sure this book would have gotten a 2.0. I don't think a 1.8. I think it would have probably been a 2.0, but getting it pressed and cleaned bumps it up to a 2.5. That's $2,000 to $3,000 in value added just by having that book pressed and cleaned. That's the type of thing you really want to consider with these high value books and especially getting it into a standard slab instead of a magazine slab. Now, the next one is one that absolutely would have been in a, in a magazine size slab. I mean, you can see here, like this thing is edge to edge. This is Hit Comics number 22. I had picked this one up at a local show and it had a huge spine roll. I think it had maybe one of the biggest spine rolls I've ever had <laughs> on one of the comics I've bought. And I couldn't believe that this thing was fit into a normal slab after he had finished with it. He just greatly improved the presentation of this book and the value of this book. Now, this isn't a super expensive book. This is a book that's around $100 a point. A 5.0 sold recently for $456. But... This easily bumped this book from about a 253 to a 4.5. So that moves it from a $250 to $300 book to around a $450 book. So again, you're adding about $150 in value by spending about $20 to get it pressed. That's well worth it in my mind. You know, that's a great return on your investment and the type of thing you want to look for when you're getting deciding to get a book pressed and cleaned. You know, some big spine rolls, especially ones that'll push a book outside of a standard slab absolutely the type of thing that you want to get pressed and cleaned as long as the value is there afterwards. Now the uh, the last spine roll book here, uh, this one also had <laughs> a pretty severe spine roll. Um, this was Marvel Mystery Comics number 16. Now this book, I was not expecting to get a, a 1.8 before he had gotten his hands on it. You know, I think this book probably would have gotten a 1.0, maybe even a 0.5, <laughs> you know, because it had this like, uh, kind of like some mold stuff on it. And I've seen CGC hit that pretty hard on, on occasion, but this one had a huge spine roll. Another book that you can see is just edge to edge. 
like edge to edge inside that case. There is no room for any type of spine roll. And he fixed all of that, got it into the standard slab, got a 1.8. And this is a book that has about $1,000 per point. That's around the value for this one. And so adding half a point, maybe even a full point to this book adds 500 to a thousand dollars. And again, you know, you put in 20 or $30 and you get that type of return. There's just no question that this is the type of book that you should get pressed and cleaned first. Now, the other thing with this one that I wanted to point out was that this was one that I felt like I had a really good interaction with the presser on. And that's because this book, he had actually reached out to me before he started working on it. And it's because he was concerned that if he fixed the spine roll, because like I said, it was a really severe spine roll. It's a relatively fragile book. Even though it's off-white pages, you can still have a book that's, you know, where the cover is kind of fragile. And he was worried that if he corrected the spine roll, that it might split some of the interior, split the cover. It was already detached though. So I wasn't too worried about that. My biggest concern was, could I get it into a standard slab? And I really wanted this one graded because I wasn't sure if that top edge was trimmed or not. I've seen these weird cuts before. I've talked about this when I got this book back. I've seen these weird cuts before, so I knew it was possible it wasn't, but I wanted that confirmed from CGC. And so I really wanted it graded. I did not want it in a magazine slab. So I, you know, I said, go for it. You know, I'm fine with it. If something happens, that's okay. And that's the type of thing, that's what you want from your presser. You want that type of communication where they're not just going to go and potentially damage your book and then after the fact to let you know. <laughs> so so he, you know, he reached out to me, let me know that there were some concerns with this one and allowed me to make that decision on if I wanted to move forward or not. And yeah, it turned out great. I mean, it's an amazing looking book and 1.8. So I was really happy with that. Now the next type, not something I submit very often, but it's modern 9.8s. So I know I've been showing Golden Age books, but that is not all that he presses. I've also sent in Silver Age, Bronze Age. I mean, I sent in my Fantastic Four number one. I've sent in plenty of amazing Spider-Man books, uh, but I've also sent in some moderns. And I've got a couple examples of those here because if you know a lot of moderns, uh, if you're not going to get a 9.8, it's often not really worth it. And so you do want to have at least some pressing done to those books first to get rid of any type of bends or rippling that might be on the cover. Now, sometimes you don't need it, but most of the time you're going to want to have some type of pressing there uh, just to help ensure that you can get that 9.8. Obviously, it needs to actually be a 9.8. <laughs> you need to check for spine ticks and that kind of thing. Pressing doesn't fix color breaks. But this is an example of one. And this is this Noctera number one. Now, I actually have two variants of this Noctera cover right here. This one was more of a cardstock cover. So I just kind of wanted to show the, the breadth of the types of books that he presses. And so this was a cardstock cover, 9.8, that, uh, that he got back, just a really beautiful cover. And then the other one was this uh, copy of Noctera number one, which also got a 9.8. And this one is just kind of more like your standard modern comic cover material. And, you know, also 9.8. So got all any of the little bends and, and rippling out and everything and was able to, to get that 9.8. Now I have one other modern. Now it's not a 9.8, but I wanted to show this one just because uh, it was a little bit more unique of a book. This is this Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. It's non-numbered. And this is this Kenner variant. It's the first appearance of Dash Rendar. And the reason I wanted to show this one is that this is an extremely thin book. It was like an insert with a toy. And uh, and so it's often in pretty rough shape. And so it still came back a 9.4. I remember I thought this one was going to get like an 8.5 when I sent it in. So I was really happy with the 9.4. But just an example of the variety of types of books he presses. This is just a few pages, really thin. And so you're just always gonna have slightly different methods, slightly different techniques for pressing these different types of books. So yeah, so that was that one. Now, I've also sent in some really high grade bronze books to him. And I think that's one of the important things where you want that presser that can handle books from all the different ages because they use different paper in the golden age versus the silver age versus bronze versus modern. And so there's different pressing techniques, different temperatures, everything that people will often use to get the best results. Now, this was actually from one of my, actually my first submission that I sent to him. And just this was one of the things that got me to just keep using because it's such an amazing result from this book. And this was Green Lantern number 76. If you're not familiar with this, this is the considered 
one of the books that kicked off the Bronze Age. Incredible Neil Adams cover, 9.2. And if you're not familiar with this one, this is a book that as the grade gets up above the nines, the price accelerates very, very fast. For example, a 9.4 recently sold for 7,800, a 9.2 sold for 2,880, a 9.0, 1,340, and an 8.5, 775. So this book is effectively doubling or more every half grade. And so that's an example of where when you have a book and you want to maximize the value out of that book, you want to get that book pressed and cleaned first to just make sure that, that you're gonna get the highest grade possible. And yeah, I mean, this is an awesome book. This is actually on my keeper list for uh, for quite a while. It's not currently, but this is one of my favorite covers of all time. I just, I absolutely love this cover. Now, not everything that you send in has to be like a high value book like that. So for example, this was a book that I recently bought from the, the Fantast collection. And I picked up some high grade Bronze Age books from them. But one thing that was pretty consistent between them is a lot of them had a whole bunch of these like little dents all along the spine. And that's the type of thing where if you send it in without getting it pressed and clean first, maybe you get like an eight, five or a nine, the book might be worth like 70 bucks, 60 bucks, something like that. But you send it into a presser that knows how to handle that kind of stuff. And you, you know, like this, I was just, I was amazed at the, the work on this one. He got rid of, it seemed like every single one of those little dents just looks incredible. And it gets a 9.4. Now, it's not a huge value book. It's like $125 to $150 for this book. But putting in, you know, 20 bucks, if you spent maybe 20 or 30 on this, you're going to maximize that value because not everything has to be a huge dollar book. You can do just as well selling, you know, a bunch of smaller books like this as you can a, a large book. And there's a lot bigger market for people that are comfortable spending, you know, $100 to $200 on a comic versus one to 2000. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is just an example of high grade bronze and the types of results that I've seen. And, and like I said, just perfectly cleaned up that spine. Cause I just remember these books had all these little indentations along the spine and just, yeah, looked incredible. Now, another thing that you really need to, uh, you want your presser to have experience with is dealing with books that are fragile. And so this was another one that I think this was in the first submission that I sent to him. And this is Marvel Mystery Comics number 52. Now, this is one of my favorite Alex Schomburg covers. I think it's just, it's got every element that you want. I've talked about this book before. But you can see here, this is a slightly brittle pages book. And so I've had people ask me about that quite a bit. They ask, you know, can I send in a book that is brittle or slightly brittle to get pressed and cleaned first? And... The answer is kind of, it depends. There are definitely cases where, you know, if a book is like crumbling, maybe, maybe not. You want to be real cautious about it. But this is why you want to send it to somebody that has that experience. This is a book that not only has a slightly brittle designation, but it's also, let's see here, it is a single staple book. So there's a lot of risk there that if the person doesn't know what they're doing, they could easily detach that cover or, you know, split a spine or, or something like that, which is going to greatly lower the grade of the, of the book. I think I remember I thought this one was going to come back like a three, maybe a three, five. And it ended up, I mean, it's just a beautiful 4.5. I was extremely happy with this one. Another one of those books that really just made me decide to continue sending more books to him because I knew that this book was a big challenge. You know, you have a book that is has a slightly brittle page designation, which doesn't mean everything's brittle, but it means there are brittle components to it. A single staple book, golden age book, a little bit thicker. And so a lot of, a lot of things that could go wrong if you don't know what you're doing and you know, I've got this just incredible result with it. Now, the last one I'm gonna talk about for graded books, and I've got some raw books, just kind of go over some of the things that you might wanna look for if you're getting a book uh, pressed and cleaned, uh, was, some a magazine because if you've watched my recent cgc returns i sent in a whole bunch of magazines a bunch of these vampirella magazines some really high grade books but there was one that really stood out beyond all the others and that was this book right here this is this vampirella number 36 and the reason is that this is this gold foil cover and so when i had this book i thought that it was going to be like an 80 it had a whole bunch of like indents and all kinds of things along the spine here. 
And I just, I wasn't sure if that could even be gotten out of this foil type of cover. It's not like any of the other covers in that early Vampirella run. And this is another case where I actually had a great interaction with, you know, with the comic book presser. So he reached out to me after he had worked on this book and, and sent them in to CGC. And he said that it did improve in appearance a lot, but he, he had commented that because of the kind of like that gold foil, that gold ink, it didn't take to pressing the way the other magazines did. So he had tried a whole bunch of different approaches and uh, he pressed it multiple times and just had reached out and said, hopefully, you know, it, it turns out okay and that you're, you're happy with it. And, and, you know, like I thought this book was going to be an 8-0, you know, it came back a 9-4. This is one of the best grades I got back. I got three nine sixes and I got, I think maybe four nine fours, something like that. And so, I mean, one of the, one of the best results that I got, and it was one that I had the least expectations for. I was expecting like an 8-0 because of all the kind of like indentations and stuff. And he just, he cleaned it all up, got this incredible result. And for this, like an 8-0, is around a hundred and fifty dollar book. A nine four is about a four hundred and fifty to a five hundred dollar book. So again, that's something where twenty dollars to get that book pressed and cleaned. He puts in you know all that great work uh, to improve the appearance of the book and adds about three hundred dollars in value. That is the type of thing where you can really maximize what you have and make sure that you know you can get the most out of your collection. A few moments later. Now, the last thing I have here is I've got a stack of different books that I'm going to be sending in to get pressed and cleaned and graded. And I just thought I'd show those to kind of give you an idea of the types of things that I look for. So the first one here is this Cerebus the Aardvark number one. Now, this is a pretty expensive book. It's a relatively rare book. And this is a very nice copy, but there are some flaws on it that need to get taken care of. One of them... You can see up here, see that, that bend there? That is the type of thing that you absolutely want to send a book like this in to get pressed first. If that's still there when it gets graded, it's going to have a, a definite negative impact on the value of this book. And this is the type of book that is easily over $1,000. You know, each grade or each half grade can be hundreds of dollars. And so you wanna make sure that you're getting the highest grade possible of that book. Now, there are other things, you know, there are some little indentations and, and that kind of thing along the spine, and you want that type of thing cleaned up. But, you know, and you can even see maybe a little bit of like a stacking curl here. Uh, and a stacking curl is when the books are like stacked on top of one another and you get a little in indentation. But the big one is is that corner, that like bend. There you go. Uh, yeah, there's this bend in this corner right here. And I want to get that pressed out to make sure I get the best possible grade. Now, the next one here, I just wanted to show because this was part of that magazine collection that I bought. Uh, I, I really love this cover. This is Web of Horror, and I think this is issue number two. I, don't, I think it's on the interior. Remember? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is issue number two. And what I want to show is I, I mentioned a stacking curl, and that's one of the things that, that almost all these magazines had. And if you can, let's see if I can get it to show up. I might even take it out of the bag here, make it a little easier to see because a stack and curl is the type of thing you really want to look for and you want to get pressed out before you send it in. Oh right, yeah, here we go. So see that along the spine there? So that's the type of thing where you have this indentation that runs along the spine. This one also has a few little spine ticks that could clean up. I'm actually considering maybe sending this one in to get graded as well, but this is an example of what almost all of those magazines look like. They almost all had this type of, of stacking curl or, or bend along the spine. And so I, I would not have gotten those 9.4, 9.6 type grades that I got back if I hadn't had those books pressed first. And so that's something you definitely want to look for, especially when you're dealing with a high grade book. If it's a lower grade book or a mid grade book, that's probably not going to really impact your grade. Like if you have a big crease on the cover or something, you know, like from like it's going to make it maybe a six or a six five, like a big crease down here, that stacking curl might not really impact anything. But this book I think is maybe like an eight five, something like that. And so that's the type of thing where it could definitely impact your grade and you want to get that addressed before you send it in. Now I've talked a lot about spine rolls. If you watched my unboxing video with this one, this is Superworld Comics number one. 
Just an amazing cover. I love this one. Now, it is a 0.5. It's incomplete, but it's still a book I want to get pressed. And the reason is it was actually already graded. It was a 0.5, uh, and it was a CGC 0 0.5. It was universal, um, but it was in a magazine-sized slab. And the reason is because it has such a huge spine roll. So there you go. So you take a look at this. You can see you've got, and when I'm talking about spine roll, this is what I'm talking about. It's this where you have this really kind of like spread out edge here where it's not uh, tied up against, you know, front to back cover. And so what that does is it makes the book much wider than it would normally be. And so then if you say have a, a case like this, it won't fit. It's too wide for the case. And so they can't put it in a standard case. They have to put it in a magazine size case. And like I said, even though the grade is the same, oftentimes just being in a magazine size case is going to hurt the value of the book. So this is an example of one that I'm going to get this spine roll fixed and I'm not really worried about anything else. I just want that fixed so that it fits inside of a, a standard case again. Um, so so yeah, that's that's just an example of a case where, you know, it's not even gonna improve the grade, but it is going to improve the appearance of the book. I wanna make sure I get this back in here safe. It's not going to improve the grade, but it's going to improve the appearance of the book. And that isn't necessarily as important as the grade, but it is very important for, for the book. And so, I mean, cause this is a great presenting copy, bright colors and everything. And, uh, and yeah, I just want it in a standard slab. Now the next one, another one that's a unique case, and this is Teen Comics number 33. Now the cool thing with this one is that this is a double cover, and it's a very unique double cover. Uh, if you happen to watch the unboxing video where I, where I picked this one up. And so that's just another case where you want somebody that's going to have that type of experience. And so here you can see that one cover and two covers. And so it's actually a double cover, and I think it'll probably be the highest grade on census. But it's a really weird double cover because <laughs> the back cover is almost completely torn off. So you can see here, like how the back cover is almost completely torn off, but it is a double cover. What it would get is it would get the first cover is a, a 0.5, and the second cover is, I don't remember what I thought it was, maybe like a 5.5 five or, or something like that. Now, um, the, uh, the, the nice thing about this one Make sure you get this in it. Uh, the nice thing about this one is that the back cover is damaged, but the front cover still looks great. And so it's still going to be a great presenting copy, uh, even though that first cover is going to be a 0.5. But just a unique situation where it does have these things that you, you'd want pressed just to improve the appearance. You know, like it's not going to improve the grade of this first cop, uh, this, this top cover, but it's going to improve the appearance. And that's what people see when it's in the slab and you want it to look as nice as possible. And so just a unique type of book. Uh, to get pressed. Uh, the next one, just kind of for like a, a golden age pre-code horror book, is this Chilling Tales number 17. And this one is just kind of your standard, has a ton of pressable defects type book. I mean, if we look at this in the, the light here, you can see all these different bends and indentations and folds and everything else, but a lot of them don't break color. Those are what you want to look for. You want to look for flaws that are like this, where you've got, you know, I'll even, I'll take this one out too, because I think this is, this is probably one of the most useful ones to see, because you can really see what you're talking about with pressable defects. And so, you know, in the light there, you can see these like folds and bends, and a lot of them don't break color. So if you get that book pressed, it will really improve the appearance and likely bump the grade up some as well. And this is also the type of book where you want to have somebody that is experienced with Golden Age books because, you know, they're, they're relatively fragile. You know, you can see there's definitely some tanning to this one and there's a little bit of staining and all that. Now, the pages are still really, you know, like supple pages. There's nothing brittle or fragile about the pages like that. But these are the types of flaws that are just like screaming to get that book pressed. You know, all these kinds of little indentations, bends, folds, all that kind of stuff that don't break color. Even if they break color, it can still improve the appearance. But the biggest improvements in grade are going to come from the types of flaws like that that don't break color. So, let's get this one back in here. 
<laughs> the next one's kind of a fun one. Uh, it's an example of, I think it's actually copper. It's not technically modern. Uh, I think it's a copper age book, but it's this one right here. This is ALF number 48. It's the uh, notorious ALF in the seal cover. Uh, but this one just has a couple little spine ticks. And it's the type of thing that I think it has, like you can kind of see it there. It's got a little bit of a stacking curl along the edge. And so this is a high grade book. I think I have it as like a 9294. And so that's exactly the type of book that this, let's see if we can see it there, that this little uh, curl along the spine could potentially lower or impact the grade. And so you wanna make sure that those are all addressed before you get that book sent in and graded uh, by CGC. Now, the, the next one is just another good example of one that has very obvious pressable defects. And again, I'm gonna take this one out of the bag because it just makes it a little bit easier to see them. And this is Brave and the Bold, number 34, for Silver Age appearance of Hawkman and Hawk Girl. And so you can see along that cover there, that's the type of stuff you wanna look for. These little indentations. It's not nearly as severe as that Chilling Tales, but you have these little indentations, little bends and creases and everything along the spine, along the, the middle of the cover. The, you know, that's, that's the thing. You don't just want to check, check the spine. You want to look at that interior of the page. Are there indentations there? Are there bends? Are there creases? And, and that's the type of stuff that you want to make sure you get that book pressed so that the only things really negatively hitting the grade are these color books color breaking flaws. You know, the, the creases that break color up in the corner there. You know, I think there's like a little little bit of damage along the spine. Like those are the types of flaws that you can't really do anything about, but you want that to be the only thing that's hurting the grade on the book. You don't want to have these, these other non-color breaking flaws that could easily be addressed with pressing um, to, to still be there when you're having it graded. And yeah, I mean, I mean the, the last book here that I'll talk about is another one I picked up recently, and this is Flash number 155. It's basically uh, Flash's Rogues Gallery. And this is another one where it's a nice copy, but it, these, this has just a few of these little indentations on the cover. A few little flaws that you want to have cleaned up, because I think, I don't remember what I graded this one as, like an 8-0 or something. Um, but it's got this, you know, kind of this bend along the spine. A little bit of it breaks color, but you can have that improved greatly where it's going to look much, much nicer than this. And so that's the type of stuff, you know, just as, as I mentioned with these other books, that's what you want to look for. That's really how you can make that determination on if that's a book that you should be sending in to get pressed and cleaned and graded. Now, the last thing I just wanted to touch on is how you decide, actually, if you want to send that book in to get pressed and cleaned or graded or not. Now, the first thing is, if you don't care at all about the value, it doesn't matter, you don't care if you're losing money or making money, and you want to send the book in, you send the book in. It doesn't make a difference. But if you are trying to, you know, maybe like myself, you're running a, a comic business or you're trying to just get some return on your books to maybe sell them and buy some other books, whatever your plans are to do. The calculation you're generally going to do is what you paid for the book, what it costs to get that book pressed and cleaned and graded, and what you can sell it for. You want that number of what you paid plus what it costs to get it graded to be less than what you sell it for. And if it's not, it's probably not worth sending in. It's not always the case. There are some examples where you might still want to send it in. It still can get more value out of it. But generally, that's how you're going to make that determination. You're going to look at what your total costs into the book are, what you can sell it for, and then you decide if you should send it in or not. Now, that does require that you have a pretty confident, solid understanding of grading and that you can look at a book like this and you can say, okay, I know that my presser can get out these types of things, or usually I see that he gets out these types of things, so I can expect this type of grade. That comes with experience. It's the type of thing where you've just got to send some books in. <laughs> you've got to learn what can get cleaned up, what can't, and what those grades are ultimately going to be. But over time, you get better at it and you can make that determination on what to send in. So I know this is a little bit longer of a video, but I thought it was kind of an interesting topic, covered a lot of different things. Just remember, if you want to have a chance to win that $50 coupon from the comic book presser, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment with hashtag press. 
and you will have a chance to win that. If you want to see more videos like this, got more videos over here, got the subscription button right here, and I will see you in the next video.